Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to demonstrate what happens if I connect a plain piece of electrical wire between the negative terminal and the positive terminal of a battery. So this is not something that you should try at home, it is potentially quite dangerous and generally it's a really stupid thing to do. I am only doing this for demonstrative purposes to show how dangerous this can actually be. Now, what in theory can happen here? Well, in theory, the electrical wire, so I've just soldered two pieces of electrical wire with alligator clips on the end of them. I've just soldered them together. I've measured the resistance and the resistance is very close to zero in this electrical wire from the black alligator clip to the red alligator clip. And that means that the current can flow unimpeded through this uh, wire. Now, this battery is a 12 volt battery from a motorcycle. And if we use the formula that voltage equals resistance by current, we can infer that the current that will flow through this wire is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So because the voltage is quite high and the resistance is very low, it means that a large current can flow through this wire. Now, electrical wire like this is not designed to carry a huge current it's probably only designed to carry a current of a couple of amps. So when a large current flows through this wire for a protracted period of time, a lot of that electrical current will turn into heat energy because it can't get through the thin wire quick enough. And that heat energy will heat up the wire, the copper wire, and um, before it melts the wire, what it's going to do is it'll potentially melt the insulator. So the plastic insulator is going to heat up and that could potentially get destroyed. If the current is large enough. So this in this video, I'm going to determine if we short the wires or if we short the terminals of the battery with electrical wire, is the current enough? to melt or destroy this wire, or melt and destroy the insulator, or is it going to damage the battery? So, there's also the potential, with the large current flowing through these alligator clips, that they get welded to the terminals of the battery, and I can't get them off. There is the potential that there's a huge amount of gas created, and it causes the, um, battery to expand and get damaged. Now what it is going to do is the current is going to keep flowing in this wire until there is no charge left in the battery and at that point uh, current will stop flowing and I will then be able to determine if I can recharge this battery. So let's do this test Again, I have to take precautions because this is quite dangerous and I'm not 100% sure what the consequences of doing this are going to be. So I'm taking precautions and you really should not try this at home. Eighteen point five degrees Celsius.
so within a few seconds the wires are totally destroyed and let's check the temperature of the battery it's 19 degrees celsius bare wire just here Temperature of the wire, if we can. It's up at 45 degrees at least. Let me try here. 55 degrees, 56 degrees Celsius. It only took a couple of seconds. Let's check the voltage of our battery. What's it at? Is it destroyed? So the voltage is at about 12.41 volts. So there's plenty of life left in that battery. So here we have the remains of my electrical cable or electrical wire. It is totally destroyed, it is now totally unusable. We have nothing but destroyed insulator. It's all gone hard again because the wire is no longer hot, but you can see that we have bare wire everywhere in numerous different places. The insulator has just disappeared all over the place and then the rest of the insulator wherever it does still exist is useless because it is all just disintegrated it's all just basically crumbled and broken falling apart now the electrical wire which is made from copper is still all perfect so the reason for this is because the insulator on the wire is only good for temperatures up to between 75 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius whereas the copper wire copper as a metal is able to resist or remain as a metal a solid metal up temperatures above 1000 degrees Celsius above those temperatures copper wire will melt now before the copper wire heats up to 1000 degrees Celsius and melts the insulator will be long gone by the time the copper wire gets to the stage where it can melt there will be bare wire all your insulator will have basically burnt or have disappeared so I turned this off pretty quick before the wire kind of really went on fire or before it really became dangerous um, but as you can see, that took just a couple of seconds to be destroyed. Now if this was on your motorcycle, and shorts do occur, shorting of wires does occur on motorcycles, the exact same scenario can happen. And this is why it's so important when you're working with the electrics on your motorcycle, you should always disconnect the negative terminal or the, the lead from the negative terminal of the battery before you start working on any of the wires because if you connect up a negative and a positive wire you are creating a short potentially between the two terminals of the battery depending on how you do it and you run the risk of destroying your wiring harness um, or a part of the an important part of the wiring system in just a matter of seconds before you even have time to react the whole thing can be destroyed as you can see now generally in a motorcycle this should not happen the reason being that in a well-designed motorcycle 
you will have um, all the circuits will be protected by various fuses which have different ratings. Now what happens is when in a motorcycle in a circuit like this, let's say this wire is a circuit, somewhere in this uh, wire there should be a fuse for any of the circuits really in a motorcycle. There should be a fuse, let's say, between, let's say, here, for example. Now, with that fuse, well, what will happen is, if I had a fuse connected up here in this electrical circuit, and I had repeated the experiments or the test, what would happen is, my wire would probably remain in perfect condition, and the fuse would actually melt before anything else. So the fuse would detect, not really detect, but it's good for a certain, it's able to carry a certain current and above a certain current that fuse, the metal in the fuse will break. And when it breaks, it causes a break in the circuit and current can no longer flow. So that's how your circuits are protected in your motorcycle, but that is not something that you can be 100% guaranteed of. There is people out there who, when a fuse goes in their motorcycle, instead of replacing it with another proper fuse, or maybe they just not, it might not just be laziness, maybe they just haven't got another fuse on them and they're out in the road and they're thinking to themselves, if I can get this electrical, if I can fix this um, brake in the circuit, I can get my motorcycle started again and I can get home. So they look through their toolbox and they find something, some small piece of metal, like a nail, and they stick a little piece of uh, metal in the contacts where the fuse is meant to sit. And they think that this is just a short term solution to get them home, and then they turn on their ignition, and all of a sudden that shorted circuit no longer has a fuse in it, and their uh, wiring harness goes up in smoke just like this cable here so that's what can happen and that's why it's important that you always replace uh, any blown fuses with the proper uh, rated fuse and why you always should use fuses and don't short the contacts uh, with uh, some piece of metal. It's extremely dangerous. As you can see, this whole thing, your whole motorcycle could go up and fire in a couple of seconds without you actually, before you could even react. And as you can see, it doesn't just break at one point, it disintegrates the whole uh, wire or the whole wiring, wiring harness in uh, equally so the whole way along it'll get destroyed and once you have bare wire your electrical circuits will no longer work because these wire circuits are going to be touching off the frame or they're going to be touching off some other piece of metal and they're going to create further shorts in the electrical circuit uh, of your motorcycle so that's why um or that demonstrates just how dangerous a battery can be the reason that this generally doesn't happen in your motorcycle, as I said, is because of the fuses in your motorcycle, but also because um, the currents that generally go through the wires in your motorcycle should really not be very high. Most of these wires are rated probably, probably for just a couple of amps, and there probably is never more than a couple of amps flowing through these circuits, and that's because the resistance in these circuits due to the loads in the circuit, such as the indicators and the light bulbs, and they all have a high resistance, which reduces the flow of current through these circuits. So your electrical circuits should be working fine with low currents flowing through them, and you shouldn't have a melting wires. So that's it everyone. Hopefully you've learned something important from this video. Uh, stay safe.